Welcome back to Salem News Night. And following up on that bombshell event yesterday, the first time in American history the Speaker of the House has been vacated. Uh, there are a lot of questions as to what comes next. Who will be the next speaker? Who will be the person that can unite the caucus against the President Biden awful agenda? Who is going to be the person that can do that? Uh, Kevin McCarthy clearly wasn't the man for the job, and Representative Bob Good from Virginia's 5th Congressional District, uh, you were one of the members that decided McCarthy had to go. So first off, uh, welcome to the show. Great to be with you again, Doug. Absolutely. And, and I would love just sort of like your thoughts on this because, you know, it was a very close vote. I think it was 216 to oust versus 210 to remain. Um, you were one of the crucial members of the Republican caucus that said McCarthy was out. So what was the justification? What, what made you think that McCarthy wasn't up for the job? The most recent indication of that or confirmation, I should say, was Saturday's continuing resolution where we repeated the failures of the past where not only did we do a continuing resolution because we were so fearful of any temporary government shutdown and we surrendered to the Democrats, but we didn't pass our 12 spending bills. We didn't even bring all 12 of them to the floor like the speaker had committed. Mm. Uh, in addition, we passed that continuing resolution. It was so bad because it was unconditional that Democrats voted for it 209 to one in the House. And the only one who voted against it was because it didn't have Ukraine money in it. And the Democrats in the Senate voted for it 51 to zero. And that's what we said back in January, that we couldn't do that. We did it also with the Failed Responsibility Act or the debt ceiling increase, the FRA, back uh, around the 1st of June, where we uh, had an, ha passed an unconditional increase to the debt limit through January of 25, as much as Congress can come together and spend trillions of dollars more borrowing from our kids and our grandkids. And again, it was passed overwhelmingly with Democrat votes. We don't need a House majority, Republican majority to do that or a House Republican speaker to do that. We can get that with the Democrats. And so what we want to do is get a new a speaker who's going to be a fighter, uh, who's going to be a partner in, as you said, for combating the, the Biden, Pelosi, Schumer agenda under which the American people are, are suffering. The continued resolution keeps all the bad policies in place and keeps all the spending levels in place that are literally destroying and bankrupting the country. Absolutely. So the, the next obvious question then becomes, who replaces McCarthy. Uh, Matt Gates, who sort of uh, was one of the sort of ringleaders of this, who, who very much led the charge against McCarthy, put out a few names. Uh, Scalise popped up on that list. I believe Kevin Hearn has also thrown his hat into the ring. Uh, we've seen Jim Jordan express some interest. Is there anybody that you're seeing in the conference right now that really grabs your attention, that you say, this would be a person that I think would be able to lead us against Joe Biden? Well, I'm going to delay publicly uh, na naming names or saying who that I might support. I will tell you, I think there's going to be a, a, around a half a dozen candidates that are already socializing, circulating, meeting, making private phone calls, having private meetings. Uh, we're going to begin to vet those candidates very soon here. Uh, I've got individuals reaching out to me. Uh, we're talking and having discussions. And the good news is we will have a true contest or a competition for speaker among the 221 republicans we've got talented qualified members this will not be a coronation of the status quo like we had in january even though it was delayed there was only one real candidate because no one was willing to credibly raise their hand and say i will take on the speaker for fear of retaliation or consequence for not towing the company line so to speak and because on the presumption that the speaker would ultimately eventually prevail as kevin mccarthy did. But now it's sort of a level playing field. And everybody, of course, is in a different position in terms of stature or credibility or influence within the conference. So I won't say everyone is equal in that sense, but everyone has the equal opportunity to put their hat in the ring and to try to see if they can corral the votes. And the good news is this, is a, this was a blow against the uniparty system, the swamp cartel that's given us $33 trillion in national debt, that's failing the American people, that's allowing an open border, the weaponization of government against its citizens. And so the good news is we as Republicans will select someone that more closely reflects the center mass, the center conservative mass of the conference and the Republican base who gave us the majority and who will be willing to fight, not just surrender. We know we're not going to get everything we want and we only have the House, we don't have the Senate or the White House, but we ought to get something that we want. We shouldn't surrender completely and capitulate to the Democrats, which is what we were doing, at least on those major spending bills this year. And that's what we, that's what we will elect. We will own that speaker, 218 of the 221, half, hopefully all 221 will vote for that person on the House floor. Uh, but we will have a vested interest in their success because the country needs to person to be successful, and we will all have voted for that person to become our speaker. Congressman Good, uh, Kevin McCarthy is not removed from 
in Congress. I know that this is sort of confusing for people outside of the Beltway. What exactly happened? He was just removed from his speakership position, but he's still a member of Congress. Where do you Correct. view McCarthy's role landing now that he has been ousted from this position, but he's still in Congress? Do you think that he should be involved in decisions that are being made about the next speaker? Do you think he should be involved in making decisions about where the conference should go from here? Where do you view McCarthy's role going forward? Well, I, I think we all appreciate that he's worked very hard. And, uh, you know, I didn't agree with him on a lot of things. I think he worked very hard. And uh, I'm sure he has contributions he can make to the conference. And I'm sure he'll have some influence with it, some individuals more than others. Uh, but he'll continue to represent his district. And he'll have as much voice as he wants to lend the voice into the process, as we all do. Uh, and obviously, he has some, some influence because he was the former speaker. So. Absolutely. So one of the other <laughs> one of the other theories that's sort of running around Washington right now, again, for viewers at home, a member of the House of Representatives is not required. That's not a required position to be the Speaker of the House, but it generally is how it goes. Former President Donald Trump has apparently been reached out to. People have said that former President Donald Trump could be Speaker of the House. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that President Trump should do that or do you think he should focus more on the presidential race? Well, I think uh, President Trump was an excellent president, and uh, but but I don't think that he's someone who's going to come to. I think it's a, a very long shot that anyone who's not a sitting member of the House would be able to get 218 votes. And I think President Trump is more of an executive than he is a wants to deal with the minutia, the parliamentarian procedure of the legislature, and the, and the congressional branch. And so I don't think that's a realistic uh, scenario. And I don't hear members talking about that. I just hear folks kind of outside of Congress speculating, wondering if that might be a. A possible situation. Congressman Good, the Speaker for the House, as you mentioned, has quite a bit of work in front of them, right? They have to unite the caucus yes. against the Democrats and particularly Joe Biden, the Pelosi Schumer agenda here. What do you view as the largest priorities? Because I can see a couple of things that need to be done here from my position. There are large, it seems like, divisions within the Republican caucus about the direction of the party and what the House should be doing. Obviously, the president has been passing legislation, has been pushing for policy that just is terrible for the country. What do you view as the step one, the first day thing that the speaker should be doing once he or she takes office? Well, speaking just for myself, honestly, I don't want to misrepresent, I'm speaking for any other individuals, uh, but I, I will say just that we will, by virtue of the definition of voting for the speaker, we will have unity. We have not had genuine, true unity. Now, we may struggle and tussle and debate and fight to get there, hopefully privately over the next few days and through Tuesday night's candidate forum. And, if, and maybe if we have to go into Wednesday or Thursday to do that, it's better to get it right than it is to do it fast. You know, we're trying to seek a David, not a Saul, if you will, in choosing not a, not a king, but a speaker. So, but, but we will have to come together with 218, ideally 221, uh, that was sort of the compromise candidate. It won't be who Bob Good thinks is the perfect candidate because that doesn't exist. And, it, and I'll have to compromise and work with the larger uh, conference, as will all other members. And a handful of us can block someone from becoming a speaker, but not one individual can pick someone for being speaker. But I would say that uh, they need to reflect, again, the conservative center, the conservative critical mass of the Republican conference and the Republican base that wants to do conservative things, that wants to fight, uh, that, that show, has leadership qualities and is tough and, and just has those, those abilities to influence others and to, 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 uh, to be a CEO that casts the vision and influences others to follow along because they see that person as the leader that we need. Uh, my hope would be that they would certainly be committed to passing all 12 of our appropriation bills as quickly as we can, the most conservative bills we can send to the Senate and then be a tough fighter negotiator there that would commit to getting the balanced budget to the floor, that would commit to border security, and would commit to doing something about the woke weaponization of the federal government against its citizens. And the last thing I would add that's going to take on the WHO, the WHO uh, threat of, of that's, that's with the UN right now that's coming soon, where the Biden administration plans to surrender our national sovereignty as it comes to uh, uh, dealing with viruses and national emergencies, that sort of thing, to the WHO. That is a terrible, terrible threat to the country that we need a speaker to engage in as well. Congressman, we've got about 20 seconds left here. Final question. Do you anticipate seeing what we saw back in January where we went through uh, a number of rounds on voting for speaker? I don't think so. I think the Republican conference will do the hard work in the conference. Uh, it'll be a little messy, I'm sure. It'll be a little tough, I'm sure. And it'll be intense. But I think we will come out of that conference unified, again, hopefully at 221, not just at 218, before we bring it to the House floor. And the public will only see us vote in, hopefully, on the first ballot, whoever that best person is that can, can unite the conference. Congressman Bob Good from Virginia's 5th Congressional District, thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir.
Thanks, great to be with you, Doug. Stick around, Salem News Night continues next.